Lord, you are a good God. You are good to us. Lift your voice and call upon his name. That's why we reverence you. That's why we bless you. That's why we are here because of you. Our lives are a testimony and a testament of your goodness, of your kindness, of your outstretched arm, of your mercies. That's why we love you. That's why we bless you. The more I know you, it's the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Oh, the more I know you, it's the more. one minute can you lift your voice and ask him for a visitation ask him for a touch say Lord I'm hungry for you tonight I'm hungry to hear from you I'm hungry to receive an impartation from your spirit I'm thirsty for the fountain that flows from your throne come on lift your voice and talk to him Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Express your hunger through your prayer tonight. Congregation. Only you can satisfy. Come on, we are doing better. Lift your voice and let's raise that song to him. Say, only you can. You can satisfy me. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name. The name of Jesus. Christ my King. What a beautiful name. Come on, say. Jesus.
place the same touch every life transform us in the light of you fill this room with your presence fill this room with your tangible weight of your glory all over this room and those online visit us tonight Just raise a sound to him. Just raise a sound. be your name we thank you in Jesus name amen and amen God bless you please be seated so we dance in your presence till you come again and we'll sing hallelujah till you feel this place Lord we dance in your presence till you feel this room 
So we sing hallelujah till you come again. I'm desperate for you. Yeah. I'm lost without you. I am that I am, I'm desperate for you. I need you, Lord. I'm lost without you. This is the generation of them that seek you, that seek your face. Father, week after week, we keep coming because we know there is more, more to behold, more to receive, more to hear. More to know, more to experience in you. We're desperate for you. Abraza Mahasi. Bando ko baraka besia moshi. Ila brando broko so brahada laman. Thy couple of persons right now, just be soft. You are having an experience right now. There are a couple of persons now. And it looks like something is being poured on you. It's the love of God that is being released on you afresh. And God is taking you to another place of intimacy with Him. Fill us to the overflow, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, I want us to cultivate a habit of participation when we come before God. This is your father's house. Amen. What he desires of us is koinonia, is fellowship. And fellowship means that both parties are active in their participation. God is always ready to pour out himself, but there has to be someone who is desperate for him. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus was passing, he didn't have the eyes to see, but he cried out of desperation. Sometimes you need to learn how to be desperate in the presence of God. Sometimes you need to learn how to look away from your environment and look away from who is looking at you and tell him how much you need him. His desire is that we should know him. And that's why we come here week after week. And I want you to understand that what we experience here is a complete package. When we come into this place every Sunday, God is mandated to do three things to us. Number one, by the ministry of the word to bring us into greater measures of his wisdom and supply intelligence by which we can understand the kingdom and how it operates so that we can become participants in what he's doing number two to bring us into an environment where his presence is exposed because it is his presence that transforms you it's not just what you know the experiential part of the knowledge you receive is resident in the presence of God and there has to be that physical contact you need the presence of God for existence for everyday life there is a part of your transformation that can only happen when you have a direct contact with his presence and that's what he does with us in this place and then number three to expose us to greater layers of the revelation of his power because it is his power that enforces his will in our lives. It is his power that enforces divine possibilities so that heaven or the earth can become as it is in heaven. 
And I trust that tonight God will take us further into a higher place in Him in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to do um, an exposition tonight on something that probably is common. Something that is commonly practiced in the body of Christ. By the way, it's good to see every one of us again. I welcome you to Numatech. Those that are following us online, God bless you. And I trust that your life will never be the same after tonight. Amen. So I want to teach on something very common, commonly practiced by many Christians. But the Lord just laid it on my heart about a week ago because he wants to give us perspective. God wants us to be circumspect. He wants us to be accurate in how we handle the knowledge of his ways. And that's the reason why when we come here, we take our time to bring an exposition from the word of God. Not because we want to bore you with too many verses, but God is raising an army of believers that are not just powerful in themselves, but are intelligent in the things of the kingdom. So that you go from being a novice into being an intellectual being in the kingdom. Paul said, how be it when we are among them that are mature, we speak wisdom. He said, but not the wisdom of this age. Or not the rulers of this age. He said, but we speak a hidden wisdom. And that's what he wants to reveal to us by the exposition of his word. Amen. And I trust God to bless our hearts. Please lend me your ears and your mind and your heart and bring out your writing materials. We'll do some writing and as well as some reading of scripture. And I trust God that we'll land somewhere and then pray. Amen. I want to do an exposition on what is commonly called the first fruit offering. I want to do an exposition on what is commonly called the first fruits offering. Amen. Worship team, thank you so much. God bless you for that wonderful, wonderful ministration. All right, let's begin. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4, please work on this. That by faith Abel offered a more excellent offering than Cain. And God had respect for his offering. And the Bible says so highly esteemed what was this offering he gave to God. That even when he was murdered by Cain. On account of the fact that God saw that what he did was righteous. The Bible says his blood kept speaking. And that shows us that the sign that a man is accepted before God is that everything you do becomes accepted and becomes works of righteousness. So whatever you do is accepted because you have been accepted. And we know that by this time, Jesus had not died. Man just fell. So man was already away from God's righteous standard. What was in Abel's offering? That the Bible called it righteous. In fact, the Bible says God had respect. Isn't it? God had respect. There were not many times that that was written about a man in scripture. So it's worth studying. If God can have respect for such a man and his offering, it means that as intelligent believers that want to grow to know God sincerely and his ways, we must understand what he did and know how to apply it. Because there's a place in Psalms where, the, where God told them, I think Psalms 50, he said, if I need a sacrifice or an offering, I will not come to you. Say, because all the beasts of the field are mine and the cattle on the thousand hills. Yet, he said, gather my people to me, those who have made a covenant by sacrifice. There is a sacrifice that is acceptable before God. So give us Genesis chapter 4. Let's look at the details of this act that Abel did and um, trust God to be able to navigate somewhere and come into full understanding of what we call the first fruit offering verse 4 verse 3 rather Genesis 4 verse 3 and then we'll journey
Now let me say this before I finish, uh, before I go on with the preaching. Um, I told you that this year is going to be the year of the supernatural, right? And that means God is going to be speaking to us as often as possible so that we can be aware of his plans on the earth and be aware of the things happening around us. God showed me during the week I saw something strange that will happen in this country and I will want us to pray. I saw several assassination attempts and this attempt or this plot were made towards um, highly placed political people or top military officers. Let me repeat myself again. I said I saw an assassination attempt and it didn't just happen once. And I saw that these attempts and plots were targeted towards highly placed politicians or elder statesmen or top military officers. Now I've taken time to pray that God will avert it so that these things will not happen back to back and bring Nigeria again before global sin but I want us to really pray the Bible says the former things have come to pass and new things do I declare and before they spring forth I will tell you so it doesn't look like it will happen that's what I'm telling you now we should pray and avert it amen I saw assassination attempt to highly placed politicians or targeted at top military officers and if you know anybody close to you that is around that corridor of power, you have to do your best to pray and cover them. Amen? I believe that if we pray, certain things can be averted. But if we fold our hands, it will happen. Last year, I told you one time in our meeting that I said we should pray for the evasion sector, isn't it? I saw an accident. And I specifically said I saw a lady. It happened the following week. Isn't it? Now, I want us to pray. From what I see, it may happen once or twice. But if we pray, God will minimize it. Amen? I trust that God will send us deliverance. Alright, now let's journey. Verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Verse 4. Now before this time, the Bible showed us in the few verses before now that both of them had occupations. Abel was a shepherd of the flock. Cain was a tiller of the ground. Amen. Now, I wonder why he chose farming. Because shortly before that time, God cursed the ground. In Genesis 3, God told Adam, he said, Cursed is the ground for your sake. You will labor, but it will only bring forth thistles and thorn. So if I was Cain, being the firstborn, that's not a good line to choose your occupation, isn't it? That's why if you study Cain's character very well and you read 1 John, the Bible described Cain as of the wicked one. Many of the things that Cain did showed how that he carried the seed that was not of God. Are we together? But that's not my interest, okay? Otherwise, that can take us the whole time today. But let's continue. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock, and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. Now I want us to look at that verse in different translation. First of all, give me NIV. Then give me Amplified Version. Then give me NLT. Then give me the Living Bible Translation. And if you don't have the Living Bible Translation, start downloading it now. Amen. Every Bible is alive, but there is a Living Bible. So give us NIV first. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. you notice there is a word repeated in this translation. What is that word? Firstborn. Then the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Give me Amplify. Then we will see NLT. Then if you have TLB, we will see that. And Abel brought off the firstborn of his flock firstborn again and of the fat portions give us new living translation Abel also brought a gift and then the Bible was detailed about Abel's offering 
the best of the firstborn again lambs from his flock firstborn lambs from his flock do you have the living bible if you don't have we'll just continue okay so i i i i i wanted us to see the different perspectives from these translations because i wanted to pick the word first you will notice that god was detailed or the writer was detailed about the offering of abel much more than cain and anytime god is detailed about an activity or about a person in the bible is because he wants us to study for emphasis god was detailed about abel's offering because it was the details that communicated why it was respected and the bible said he brought the first what it means is that his flock the first set of children he looked for the best and the fattest among them and sacrificed them now that was risky what if they didn't conceive and give birth again it means he had lost isn't it in other words, this kind of offering is, a, is sacrificial in nature. And the fact that it's sacrificial shows that it is of faith. Because it is faith that will make you move. Not, you know, it faith makes you see what is invisible, makes you hear what is inaudible, and makes you feel what is intangible. Faith makes you step out even when the coast is not clear. And the Bible says our righteousness is of faith. No wonder in Hebrews the Bible says God had respect for his offering and his, he was called righteous. Because this sacrificial act showed that it was out of faith. Amen. Alright, let's join in. So, let's talk more a little about the first fruit. Another character you find in Genesis is Abraham. Genesis 22 from verse 1 to 5, you know the story. Abraham, God, after 25 years waiting for a child, God gave him Isaac, and then here God was asking him to offer Isaac as an offering. He said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Meaning that there was a tendency for Abraham to go and look for Ishmael, where he was. Is it not? That was why God was detailed. God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love and the funny part of this um, chapter is that Abraham the Bible did not show us that he consulted his wife sometimes in moving to obey God there are people you shouldn't consult vice versa in fact sometimes don't consult your mind do it first then start thinking Amen? Yeah. So, and Abraham got to the mountain on the third day with his son and his two servants. And here was Abraham's statement in verse 5. Abraham told the servants, he said, two of you wait here and I and the, and, and the boy will go far and worship and come back. He was calling the killing of his son worship. That's the reason why every, if you read Hebrews chapter 11, all those guys that were, who's, who's, um, whose story was documented if you check very carefully they all did crazy things as a matter of fact parental advisory don't do what they did do you understand what I'm saying all of them how do you call the killing of your child worship what kind of worship is that where is the musical instrument and you know that Isaac was his firstborn of promise Ishmael was the firstborn in the flesh, but the, according to God's promise, Isaac was the first. So we begin to see that God is particular about any kind of offering that is, that is, is termed or referenced as first. Give us um, another scripture. Let's go on. Exodus 23 verse 14 to 16. I beg your pardon. We'll read a few scriptures before we start to teach. Exodus 23, verse 14 to 16. Read 14 to 16, and then we'll read verse 19. Three times, this is God speaking to the children of Israel in the wilderness through Moses, giving them laws. 
by which they will be covenanted to him as his people. Three times you shall keep a feast to me in the year. Go on. You shall keep the feast of unleavened bread. You shall eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded you at the time appointed in the Mount of Abib. For in it you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty. Go on verse 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of your labors. See the first fruits here again. Which you have sown in the field and in the feast of in, in gathering at the end of the year when you have gathered in the fruit gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. Now give us verse 19. The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Okay, give us this verse in New Living Translation. The first of the first fruits of your land you will bring unto the house of God. So let's see this verse in New Living Translation. As you harvest your crops, bring the very best of the first harvest to the house of the Lord your God. Amen. So, God, of course, we know that God gave laws to the children of Israel through Moses as a sign of his covenant with them, that they were his people. And the sign that a man or a people are God's people is the kind of covenant that God enters with them. That's the reason why the deeper part of your work with God as a believer is in the phase of covenant. Everybody say covenant. Now, I don't have time. I would have given us the difference between covenant and contract. So, but God gave the laws and the laws that God gave through Moses were divided into three sections. There were, uh, there were moral laws, there were religious laws, and there were ceremonial laws. And this is not part of the teaching, but let me just say this to shock somebody. As I've studied the Bible over and over again, out of all those laws that God gave, the only set of laws that the blood of Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross cancels out are ceremonial laws. Sorry. Yeah, ceremonial laws. The laws that contain all the kind of sacrifice that they should do and all of that. Amen. Now, one of these Sundays, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that so that we can understand. Because I know somebody is shaking on his chair now. In the ceremonial laws, there were three major feasts. Oh, sorry, in the religious laws, there were three major feasts that God required the children of Israel to hold every year. And God was specific to tell them that when they come before him within this period, they should ensure that they don't come empty-handed. The three feasts were the feast of the Passover, the feast of Pentecost or the first fruit, and then the feast of um, the weeks, feast of weeks. The feast of weeks had three feasts put together. The feast of trumpets, the feast of atonement, and the feast of tabernacle. And I want to give us um, a prophetic picture of what these three feasts represent. God was, God was actually showing what will happen in the new testament at redemption by these three feasts first of all the feast of passover was how that god delivered them in east in egypt you remember the night that the spirit of death killed uh, uh, the firstborns of egypt god told them are we together if you are with me say amen. amen all right god told them to kill a year old lamb that was without blemish and that passover lamb in the new testament is jesus that speaks that feast speaks of our redemption in christ of how that we are saved through the crucifixion of christ and the ultimate sacrifice he prayed he is the passover lamb the feast of pentecost or the feast of harvest was 50 days after the feast of the passover that was why it was 50 days after jesus died that the holy spirit came when he resurrected, he stayed for 40 days. He left. And when he was leaving, he told the disciples, tarry in Jerusalem. And after 10 days of their tarrying, the Holy Ghost came. So that is why it is called Pentecost, the first fruit. Because the Holy Ghost is the first fruit of our redemption. I will explain that further. And then the Feast of Weeks 
had to do with the consummation of our redemption. The place that God intended to take us to. Just like God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were in the wilderness, they made covenant with God, received his laws, and he prepared them to enter into their promised land, which was their rest. Now the feast of Pentecost, which is the feast of the harvest, God told them they should ensure that they bring the first part of the harvest. As soon as they get into the land, the first harvest they made was not for them, it was for God. Say amen. amen. You know, economically, that's risky. What are you going to eat till the remaining one are harvested? Amen. But this is where the, f- the first fruit was instituted. Ezekiel 44. Let's read verse 30. See more scriptures on the first fruits and then we'll continue. Ezekiel 44 verse 30. The first of the ripe fruits and all the gifts brought to the Lord will go to the priest. Will go to who? Okay, this is New Living Translation. Give me New King James. The best of all first fruits of any kind, of any kind, and every sacrifice of any kind from all your sacrifices shall be the priest. Also you shall give to the priest the first of your ground meal to cause a blessing to rest on you. So in this place, a description was made as to whom it was to be offered to and the purpose for the first fruit. God said it was to be offered to the priest and the reason was so that a blessing can rest on them. Isn't it? Alright, more scriptures. Deuteronomy 26. There are a lot of scriptures, but I will just um, cut some of them because of time. Deuteronomy 26, verse 1 to 11. There's somebody that God will heal of a headache. I see the headache at the side of your head. From this side of your head, one side. Before the end of this service, God is healing you right now. And it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. And you possess it and dwell in it. It's a long reading. We are reading from verse 1 to verse 11 and then verse 14 to 15. That you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground from your land that the Lord your God is giving you. A basket and go to the place where the Lord your God choose to make his name abide. And you shall go to the one who is in other words, I, and you shall go to the one who is priest. Say amen. I'm just joking. I'm joking. Okay? I'm just joking. <laughs> And you shall go to the one who is priest in those days and say to him, I declare today to the Lord your God that I have come to the country which the Lord swore to our fathers to give us. Let's go on. Then the priest shall take the basket out of your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God. And you shall answer and say before the Lord your God, My father was a Syrian about to perish, speaking of Jacob. And he went down to Egypt and dwelt there, few in number, and there he became a nation, great, mighty, and populous. Next verse. But the Egyptians mistreated us, afflicted us, and laid hard bondage on us. Next verse. Then we cried out to the Lord God of our fathers, and the Lord heard our voice and looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of Egypt, with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He has brought us to this place and has given us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now, behold, I have brought the first fruits of the land which you, O Lord, have given me. Then you shall set it before the Lord your God and worship before the Lord your God. Go on. So you shall rejoice in every good thing which the Lord your God has given to you and your house 
and you and the Levite and the stranger who is among you. Give us verse 14 and 15 of the same chapter. I have not eaten, you are still declaring now, according to uh, the portion. I have not eaten any of it when in mourning, nor have I removed any of it for an unclean use, nor given any of it for the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord my God and have done according to all that you have commanded me. 15 and the last. Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the land which you have given us just as you swore to our fathers a land flowing with milk and honey. So it is in obedience to this practice that the individual can pray this prayer which is in verse 15 and that prayer is in a way commanding God he said look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel why because someone is obedient to God's instruction verse chapter 28 of the same book verse 1 and 2 hallelujah now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God the Lord bless the reading of his word so I, I did all this reading so that we can understand, we can have a, a, a background picture of why this offering was instituted and the instructions that govern it and how it should be brought. Amen. So let's discuss now. Now, there are reasons for why God requested the first fruits from the children of Israel. We are studying the children of Israel because this is a covenant nation with God. Isn't it? God required the first fruits from them for several reasons. I'll give you a few. Number one, because they were God's firstborn nation. So, they are giving of the first produce of the land of Canaan and they are doing it every year was a, a, a physical show that they had that place of being God's firstborn. God's firstborn nation. Another reason is that so that God can be seen or God can, God can be termed as having first place in their life. So the reason why they gave the first fruit was because it was, it was, it was an act of show that they, you know, God was their topmost priority and that was why they were giving the first fruit. Another reason was so that God could be provoked to bless them in the land. Because when they moved into Canaan, manna stopped. They were no longer receiving manna from God. Isn't it? So, now that they have come in, they were expected to eat of the fruit of that land. But then the first harvest, God said, give it to me. Why? It was an act of faith. You see why the Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. It was an act of faith that just as you've given this to me, you have made me your sustenance. And I will ensure that the remaining harvest is fruitful and abundance, abundant. That's why in chapter 26 where we read in verse 15, he told them to say to him, now send down your blessing. Are we together? So these are some of the reasons for why God instituted the first fruit and then finally it was a covenant practice you see as you walk with god there are certain things that the holy spirit will tell you to do that he may not tell other people to do and that becomes your covenant walk with god by those by your act of obedience to those things you enter into a covenant with god and covenant is like a receipt a receipt or a proof or, 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 or what's the word I'll use now? An endorsement that you being a bona fide son of the kingdom can receive your inheritance. 
it's true that we have been blessed with all riches in Christ, in, in Christ Jesus, isn't it? But I hope you know that everything that Jesus, uh, we have in Christ Jesus was paid for. The New Testament that we belong to, that we claim to have received everything free, was actually enacted on a covenant. That's why it's called New Covenant, isn't it? Yeah. That means somebody paid for it and it's not free. So we can all legally be in Christ and we potentially have access to an inheritance in Christ. But for you to lay hold of those inheritances, God will have to instigate certain things that will place a demand on your obedience. Remember last, last week I spoke about obedience, isn't it? And when your obedience is paid to God, you enter into a covenant with God that compels God to bring you into the fullness of your inheritance. Somebody say amen. That's how we enter into the fullness of what we have. That's the reason why the anointing is a free gift. But you must fast for it. You must pray for it. You can't just keep eating and be anointed overnight. No. It's, it's anti-covenant rules. Are we together? So this is an example of that. Now, God told them to whom they were to give the first fruits to. God told them they should give it to the priest. We saw that in Ezekiel 44 verse 30, right? Where we read. And then, give us Deuteronomy 18 verse 1 to 4. Let's read another perspective, but the same thing. So the first fruits were to be offered to the priest. They were to receive it on behalf of God for the people. The priest, the Levites, all the tribes of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire and his portion. Therefore they shall have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance as he said to them. Now, hold on. If the Bible says the Lord is the inheritance of the priests, it means that everything that the Lord has is their own, isn't it? Isn't it? How many of you remember that story of, I think it was the story of the tortoise many years ago, in, they, they teach us in school, that um, they cooked food and they asked everybody, what's your name, what's your name, what's your name? And they asked the tortoise, they said, my name is all of you. How many of you remember that story? And so when they served the food, they, they say, Who's, who is this food for? And then the, the person who served said, it's for all of you. And then tortoise stood up and said, well, my name is all of you. You remember that? So, therefore they shall have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance as he has said to them. Now give us verse 4. And this shall be, verse 4, the first fruits of your grain, your new wine and your oil, and the first of the fleece of your sheep, you shall give, you shall give. The first fruit can also be given to a man of God. You see that in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 42. 2 Kings 4.42 You don't want to know how much I prayed before coming to preach this. You understand? Somebody say, uh -huh. Then, a man came from Balshalisha. Well, Shalisha in Hebrew means a place of three deities or three gods. So a man came from that place and brought the man of God, which is Elisha, bread of the fresh fruits, 20 loaves of barley bread, and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. And he said, give it to the people that they may eat. And the reason why I brought the meaning of the, the town where he came from was because the, the meaning of the town is a place of three gods. That means there were idol worshippers in that place. This man should have been used to idol worship that he would have offered this offering to one of the idols. But he came all the way to offer it to who? To the man of God. And the reason why God gave the injunction for them to offer it to the priest was because God didn't give an inheritance to this of the temple. And so they get to stay what comes. Malak speaks to the prophet. God was angry with the children of the reason was because he was contributing for the building of his house and they stopped themselves to farm, which is wrong. Are we together? So God had to correct them through prophet. 
So let me explain something and then we'll continue. If you let me say amen. amen. Now here a perspective of two of their family can be the first income that comes to them. For some it could be the first salary they receive at a new job or at a promotion. For some people, the first returns that come, the first gains that come from their business. And then, if you read the scripture very well, give them an injunction that it should be yearly. You must keep doing it. It's a covenant. If you read Leviticus 23, he said it's a memorial before the Lord forever and ever. So, whichever way it is, it still falls under the offering of the first fruits. Amen. Now give us Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35 to 37. Yeah. And we made ordinances to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all fruits of all threes. Yeah, by, yeah, by the house of the Lord to bring the firstborn of our sons and our cattle as it written in the law. The firstborn of our herds and our flocks to the house of God, to the priests who minister in the house of our God. 37. To bring the first fruit of our offerings, the fruits for kinds of trees, the new wine and oil to the house of our God, and to bring the tithes of our land to the Levites for the Levites and all of that, all of that, all of that. Amen. So this is just a clearer perspective just to confirm all that we have been discussing about the first fruit. And of course, even the first bonds, especially the bond made were the Lord's. What God told them to do was that they will have to give him that meal. That's why I thank God because Jesus Christ is the ultimate sacrifice to rule out every sacrifice that we should be doing. Say that. Good. So when he was break this one. The Bible in Luke chapter 2, verse 2 to 24. And he was brought to the temple after eight days or after his circumcision and they gave first fruit offering on his behalf. To, the Bible says, Christ is the end of the law. And Jesus himself said, I have not come to, you know, break the law, but to fulfill it. So Jesus in himself had to allow this law to be fulfilled for him. It was to the cross for us. You see, there is a perspective of the first fruit offering that differs bit from the Old and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, God will give them offerings that was required of them. Do this, do that, this offering, this offering, that offering, and all of that. Now, you would think that in the New Testament, it should be easy. Isn't it? It should be easy, actually. Because in the New Testament, the offering is you. This means, he said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you, dearly beloved, that you present yourself living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. In the Old Testament, there were offerings you were required to bring, like the first fruits. But in the New Testament, you were the offering. That means everything you have is, is offered unto God. And the Bible calls it your reasonable service. In other words, if you will do anything that will make sense to God, your life is first dedicated to Him. Now, if my life is dedicated to God, does He exempt my substance? Does He exempt my car? Does He exempt my house? Does He exempt my business? Does he exempt my children? Does he exempt anything that I have or I own? No. So which one is harder? Now I told you that um, I, I, gave, I started explaining something about the first fruit, you know, in connection to Pentecost, Passover, and all. I'm going to come to that. Jesus Christ Himself. This is another truth about first fruit. Jesus Christ Himself is actually referred to in scripture as the first fruit from the dead. God designed a new creature and that creature or that creation had their portrait and their model in Christ. After all, the Bible says, if a man be in Christ, he's a new. In Christ makes you a new species. 
So let's look at Jesus Christ, who is the original model of this species. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 and 23. This species of God's creation are different from the first species of man. The first Adam was create life, but later doomed to death. But the last Adam, which is another creature, was created from death to life. Watch this. But now Christ is dead. This is about a new creation. That out of the dead, something new was. That is why I taught you last year that just bled sometimes before he got to the cross. Isn't it? And it was not missed. Those seven times or those seven stages of his bleeding, seven stage of our redemption she perfected in christ can i go can i go over it okay for those of us that were around the first time he bled was when he was praying in the garden the bible says his sweat was as great drops of blood he bled so that we can have the mind of christ that's one stage of redemption the second time was when they whipped his back and the bible says by the stripes on his back we are healed so this stage of redemption was for our healing the top time was when they wore him the crowns isn't it so that we can in our soul because he is the peace he's the prince of peace and he is the bishop of our soul isn't it go on the fourth time was when he was nailed on the cross no there is there's somewhere before there there's somewhere before there yes they pulled huh yeah, they pulled his bed up. Oh, isn't it? He bled. Okay, I need to go to my jotters to, to, to know or to remember that. But then, the fifth time was on the cross. He was nailed. Bled in his hands. So that our works can be accepted. That's why the Bible calls it good works. Why? Because it is come from redemption. So, we are not good because of what we do. We do good works because we have been made perfect. Are you seeing that? I'm showing you a creation that comes from death to life. The sixth time he bled was when they nailed his feet together. And I hope you know that his feet were nailed together. Isn't it? That speaks of koinonia, relationship between the Holy Spirit and us. Then the last time was when he was spared by his side. And the Bible says at this seventh time, blood and water came out. Why? blood speaking of our redemption the bible says in ephesians chapter one that we have in his blood the forgiveness of sin but then why did water come out at this seventh time it was because the bible says in ephesians 5 that the birthing of the church was by the mystery of that he will sanctify them by the washing of water which is the word so when he was spared by his when the church was born after that time he said receive my spirit now the Bible says, but now Christ is risen from the dead. Out of the dead, God made a new creation. And has become the what? Come on, talk to me. And has become what? Of those who have fallen asleep. There is a creation that God is about to manifest on the earth. That creation has the character of life and immortality. That creation is not doomed to death. That creation has been surrendered to eternal and immortal and everlasting life. But the first root, meaning that the first portion of that, the test, the litmus test that was conducted was in Christ. So even Christ Jesus himself is first fruit. God, if the first fruit offering was not required, God was shunning it, but in another light in the New Testament. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 tells us the same thing. He's the firstborn from the dead. The early disciples were also first fruits of the church. You see that in Romans chapter 16 verse 5 and 1 Corinthians 16 verse 15. And we, all of us believers, are actually, I, I, I said it, that Christ is the first fruit of a new creation, isn't it? So we are also God's first fruit. Let me, let me say something that is aside from the teaching. So that the last people 
by prophecy that will be redeemed in Christ unto salvation Jews you know that please remind me this year for us to take a series on the book of Revelations please remind me amen if you don't remind me I'll just come and be doing my thing until December I want to have, have all the books I've studied in the Bible it is the most interesting book to understand Amen. James 1 verse 18. Ourselves are first fruits. Because after us, God's ultimate plan is that Israel, who are now falling away from salvation, will be saved. So, their rejection, okay, we'll, re we'll read that we're coming there. Of his own, with he, of, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth this is the, the 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 ingredient by which we were created the word of truth that we might be a kind of what of what of what of his creatures i just read this verse so that we can understand all the english i was talking do we now understand that of that new creature which is in christ jesus we are the first fruits are we together So I talked about, you know, that Israel will be the last set of people that will be saved. You can see that in Romans chapter verse 16. The Bible says they rejected the Savior and they rejected salvation was so that salvation can come to the Gentiles. And the Bible says if their rejection was salvation to the whole world, it says how much more will their reconciliation but from the dead? Are we together? So, I've just been trying to give us perspectives, New Testament perspectives of the first fruits. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Now, I told us that Pentecost was actually the feast that God instituted for them to celebrate and give the first fruit offerings, which was 50 days after the Passover. What happened Pentecost in Acts chapter 2? The Bible says it was on that day that the Holy Spirit came. Why did God release the Holy Spirit? On the day of Pentecost, because that day was actually an feast. That was why all the Jews were gathered in Jerusalem. Then what happened? The feast, a commemorative spiritual convocation, that the Holy Spirit came. Because if you read Romans chapter eight verse twenty-three, you can put it for us on the screen. The Bible in this our redemption, this our redemption in Christ is in stages. The first portion of our redemption is the of the gift of the Holy Spirit. As a down payment, as a deposit. You know, when you want to buy a shoe that is 20,000 and you don't have the money, and I know some of you, you can buy expensive shoes. Amen. Well, for me, I will not buy what I've not given God before. I will not buy the value of what I've not given God. I met a lady one time. This is just a joke. And then we we're discussing. I asked her, This your hair is very beautiful. How much does it cost? She said 5,000. I said, Hey, have you given 5,000 offering before? She started laughing. So, if you go to buy that shoe for 20,000 and you don't have the 20,000, you have 5,000. What will you do? You deposit that 5,000 as a down payment and a proof that you will come back to pay the remaining balance and get the shoe. Is that not so? So, God wants to redeem us. And He wants to redeem us, spirit and body. But you see, the first stage of our salvation happened to our spirit, which was, the Bible says, according to the word of truth, Christ Jesus, by the person of the Holy Spirit that tabernacles in us. Now, the reason why spirit was given was so that we can begin the work of redemption. It's only that, not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for adoption. What is the adoption? The redemption of our the complete redemption package is when our body is saved. What is redemption for somebody that doesn't understand? Redemption means to buy back and restore the original price or value of a thing. By reason of Adam's sin, disconnected from God, and everything in flesh was doomed to death, God will have to buy back our initial value that was existing in Adam. And that value will mean that if it was precious and priceless, and sinless so god 
gave us the Holy Spirit to begin the work of redemption as a deposit, as a down payment, as a fruit. That was why in post, which was the celebration of first fruit, the Holy Spirit came because the Spirit is the first fruit of the New Testament. Are we going somewhere? Do you understand me? It says it says that we are eagerly waiting because of the Spirit in us. We now grow, expecting. Give on Corinthians chapter five, five, verse one to five. We are expecting we will be redeemed from death. Your spirit has been in Christ. Your soul is being transformed. That's why coming here every week is important. As I keep teaching you the Word of God, your soul is being read. The Bible says that we will put on the new man that is created or in, in the image of him. So, our soul is transformed and redeemed by our daily walk with God in his word. But then the ultimate redemption will be when your body has been rescued from death. Otherwise, this body is mortality. It is doomed to death. I'm going to come back there. For we know that if our earthly house, oh my God, okay, this tent is destroyed. This is what he calls tent, this body. We know that if it is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal and in the heavens. Go on. We are reading to verse 5. For in this we've grown earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. The habitation he's talking about is the body. It refers to your body like a house. Now, the reason why he calls it a tent is because a tent is a temporal structure that is set up. So, for God, this body is not your original possession. The Bible says there is an original body that is built not with hands. So, this one is just a, a makeshift uh, um, 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 construction. Till when our redemption is complete, and that is when we receive that other body. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Verse 4. For we who are in this tent grow, being burdened. Can you pray in tongues for one minute? My God, something is, I, I sense light. I just sense light coming into somebody's spirit. Please don't look at me praying in tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. We need to get this. Our eyes must be opened. Is this how you pray? Light is about to break forth. Hallelujah. Verse 4, for we who are in this tent grown, being burdened. In other words, life in this body is not what God planned because it is too limited. The potential of your spirit is, is, is unlimited in its capacity. I wonder what the, the, what the, what, I don't wonder how doors look like in heaven. Because in the natural, you need door physical door to enter a place but in the supernatural you don't need a barrier stopping you you can walk through walls so i wonder what doors signify in heaven other than an opening into a dimension of revelation of the knowledge of god That's why he said in John in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, he said, I look, just keep it there. He said, I looked and I beheld, and there was a door opened. And he was asked to come up hither. He's entering through that door, opened the next phase of the revelations that he communicated. So when God says, See, I have set before you an open door which no man shut. I know we apply it to be open doors for business, finance, but let's look at the original spiritual rendition. He was writing to a church that was in Philadelphia, right? And he first of all commended their faithfulness. And faithfulness is commended first in our stewardship of the word. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 that it is, you know, that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. And in verse 2 he says it is required of a steward that is found faithful. So faithfulness is first of all judged by our commitment to the word. Now, if God was coming to reward a faithful church, 
this was what he said i said before you an open door what does it mean greater access to revelation that's the reason why you have one encounter in a dream and that encounter can keep playing out for a lifetime i tell you for we grow who are in this body for we who are in this body grown being body not because we want to be unclothed but floated why T may be swallowed up by life give me the next verse now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee as a deposit so God's proof to you that you will someday you will someday experience that transition where mortality swallowed it did not say you will drop mortality and then enter he said mortality will be consumed meaning you will slip into your glorious body that's why believers don't die we transit when a believer dies the, the, the bible calls it sleeping first corinthians 15 50 give me there quickly i pray god doesn't bend the teaching now you know what we are going to pray this night god i sense i sense that there is an opening of revelation that is coming to us it's time for god to begin to raise intelligent spiritual christians people who have an understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom people who have gone beyond attending church to having a fellowship of the mystery which is in the sun now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god nor does corruption inherit now you want inquity what it means is corruption is a dead body incorruption means that glorious body but mortality means a body that is alive and immortality is the body that has been consumed by the life that is in christ in other words that mode that's why it's people that cannot be killed do you believe testimony that he went somewhere in the north to dedicate a hotel and he didn't know the person so he just went there to please his friend and when he got there he called two of his sons his spiritual sons and while they were kept in a guest house and they were there all of a sudden they heard gunshots when they looked out of the window they saw that they were surrounded with gunmen and they began to shoot at them from outside and then they threw a tear gas into the hotel or the guest house such that one of the one of his sons began to cough and was all, almost passing out apostle Suleiman said at that point he didn't know what to do again he said how did he bring himself into his trap he told me and he began to pray and he began to quote scriptures he said my covenant will i not break nor alter the word from my lips he began to release scriptures and he told god no how will it he be heard that i was wasted in the north i came here and i died like a chicken and he closed his, his eyes and was praying in tongues according to his story when he opened his eyes he discovered that they were outside the guest house when he turned around he saw the, the gunmen far ahead still shooting at the guest house how did that one happen there are some people that can't die when that when that revelation can't be killed no and let me tell you nigeria has that heritage the story had it that Archbishop Benson Idausa didn't die of any sickness. He knew when he would die. And one hour to when he would die, he started talking, Who is going to heaven with me? Finished a very good lunch, went and sat on his chair. And that was it. Let me prophesy to somebody The weapon that shall kill you has never and will never be formed. In the name of Jesus please sit down i'm rounding up now now this i say brethren okay give us 51 behold i tell you a mystery wait the last verse said flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of god cannot inherit the kingdom of god that means we have been stopped because we are carrying flesh and blood but it switches into the next verse and it goes another way he says behold i tell you a mystery 
what is the mystery because naturally speaking that you have flesh and blood means you cannot inherit you cannot be a partaker of that fullness of immortality he said but wait there is a mystery that brings exemption and the mystery is this we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed meaning that there are some people that will die before they go to heaven there are some people that will be alive till jesus come give us verse 52 let's go on we're reading to 55 in a moment in the twinkle of an eye that's how fast rapture will happen blink your eye and the saints have been carted away that's how fast imagine that kind of technology see that's why i believe if you need you see if you need to go far with speed in this life you need a supernatural technology to work for you i'm telling you look at this that at the blink of an eye we have you know what happens there two things first of all our bodies have been changed to put on that immortal body in heaven and then we have been carted away to meet the lord at the air two things happen at a flash in a moment in the twinkle of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed 54 or 53 rather for this corruptible must put on incorruption that means dead people when they will rise in the rapture they must be clothed with that glorious body and this mortal meaning we that are alive must put on immortality 54 so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written read it together one to go death is swallowed that's why he gave the holy spirit as the first fruit so that we can believe that we will become a part of this experience because what makes you a part of this glorious transition is the power that is at work in you the bible says in philippians 3 verse 20 to 21 it says but our citizenship is of heaven from whence we look to the savior who will come and transform our vile bodies our dying bodies into his glorious body give us 21 because that's where the message is who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself the word working there is the word energia in the greek actually that is the biggest for power in the new testament there are five words for power in the greek but the heaviest of them is this word walking meaning that the way jesus will bring about this transformation that our body this dying body will become like his glorious body you know how glorious that body was first of all there was no blood in that body number one number two there was no limitation that could stop that body physically you know the story of, of resurrection while they were in the room and the doors were shut he came in and said peace be with you and i don't have time to tell you all the things that are possible with that body and how that during this year i will teach you something that can make you tap into that even while you are with this body yes it's possible it's possible the bible says he is able to do this by the same way he's able to subdue all things to himself that means if we want to know how he will do this transformation we need to understand how he's able to subdue all things all things have been subjected or subdued under christ apart from one death the bible says the last enemy that will be subdued and conquered is death so how is he going to subdue all things including death the mysteries in psalms 110 he says the lord said to my lord sit at the right hand till i make your enemies your footstool verse 2 the lord shall send the rod of his of, of your strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of your enemies you need a prophetic lens to understand that that verse was talking about what happened in pentecost because he said the lord shall send the rod of your strength the rod of your strength when god told moses stretch out your rod that outstretching of the rod was symbolic of the the, the going forth of the holy ghost that is why when moses was writing his own rendition about how the red sea was parted 
It was written in Exodus 14. He stretched his rod out and the sea parted. But in Exodus 15, when he was writing a song, he said, the blast of your nostrils, the breath of your nostrils. And that word breath is the same word used in Genesis chapter 2. And God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath, the Holy Spirit. So when he said, the Lord shall send forth the rod of thy strength out of Zion. He was talking about when the Holy Ghost was sent. Because the Zion he was talking about was not physical Jerusalem. He was talking about Mount Zion. It's a beautiful for situation of the earth. It's Mount Zion above the sides of the north. The city of the great king. Mount Zion was speaking about heaven. Dear, he says that the Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Meaning that when the Holy Ghost came, he was going to activate the dominion system of the kingdom. That was why a few chapters after they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, what, were, what did the Pharisees say? They said they have filled Jerusalem with their doctrine. Rule thou in the midst of your enemies. That's the meaning. If you understand that this is how he is able to do it, then you will know how he is able to transform our bodies. So the first fruit has gone beyond offering that we give. You see, that's the reason why sometimes when God makes us to do some physical act, it's actually a, an attempt in the physical to tell a story that is spiritually significant. That when you give God first fruit, it's not just because everybody is doing it. There are many things that are playing out. It's a mystery that you are, you are activating. And one of that mystery is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Finally, what are the blessings of the first fruits? Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with the first with, with all your possessions and the first with the first fruits of your of all your increase. Now the Bible says we do this not just because it's an offering that we give. But it's because it's a worship that we render. The Bible says we honor him when we give of the first fruit of all your increase. In other words, when you are promoted, what is the first fruit of your increase at that stage? The first salary. When you come into a new year, what is your first fruit? The first money that enters your hand. For some people, the first income, that salary earners. The Bible says when we do these things, we are not doing it because we want to enrich somebody or enrich a church. It says it is first of all considered as honor, worship. Be careful if any time the Bible says honor the Lord, the Lord there is in capital letters complete. Meaning this is a covenant scripture. It's not negotiable. It's not whether it's in Old or New Testament. Honor the Lord with your possessions first. Meaning that everything you have belongs to him. Then he says, and with the first fruit of all your increase. Just the same way God gave his own first fruits. And his first fruit was Jesus Christ. I hope you know. God's first fruit was Jesus. Jesus was his first son in flesh. And the Bible says, for God so that he... Okay. So your bands or your bank account will be filled with plenty. Amen. Now I'm just using that as an example. And your vow overflow with new wine. You know, when the Bible says wine, it has been several times to the ministry and the person of the Holy Spirit. That means, with that understanding, there are two dimensions of blessings here. The physical aspect and the spiritual. It says, not only will I inflate your bank account, not only will I bless you in the natural, but even in the spirit, it's going to be an, an expose of new dimensions of my spirit finding action through you. So your vat shall overflow with new wine. Do you know there are some physical seeds you sow and the, the harvest is an anointing? You know, you think you can fast and pray to get all the anointing. Don't die like a child. This is a law. That's why God obeyed it. He gave his first fruit, which was Christ. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10, we see the increase that came to him. We saw the plenty that came to him. It says, for it was, it was becoming of him 
or it was fitting of him by whom are all things are all things in bringing many sons to glory gave his first fruit which was his only big so that he can have many begotten sons which is you and I. Meaning, number one, the blessing of the first fruit is multiplication. So multiplication is actually something we can activate and this is the way we do it. How are you going to survive the next month? You are giving all your salary now. When you even borrowed money to transport yourself, God says, honor me with it. And then your bands shall be filled with plenty. And your overflow. Give us Second Kings chapter four, verse two to forty-four. The story of a, a man brought his fruit to the man of God, and the man of God said, "Set it before these hundred people." Funny, the man of God even take it out of it. He set it before people. Verse 40, 43. And then his servant began to question him, but his servant said, "What shall I? What, what shall I set this before one hundred men? Twenty loaves of bread. How will he feed hundred people?" He said again, give it to the people. That for thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. 44. Because Elijah, Elisha knows the blessing of the first fruit. He knows that is the action you take that activates a stream of multiplication that comes from God. Like the blessings of God are ours, but for it to come to us, it activated. Hmm? Blessing in scripture that you don't find a condition attached to it. Get it before them, and they ate and had left over according to of the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 31. We are closing now. More of the blessings of the first fruits. They ate and even had left over. Second Chronicles 31, verse 4. Commanded Hezekiah now out in Jerusalem to come and the Levites. That they might devote themselves to the Lord. Five quickly, we are reading to verse ten. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance. Brought in abundance. What did they bring? What did they bring? Of what? Grain and 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 of all the produce of the field, and they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. Go on. And the children of Israel and Judah, who dwelt in the cities of Judah, height of oxen, give us verse from verse 7 to 10. In the third month, they began laying them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. As they kept bringing, abundance began to come. The Bible says they laid it in heaps. Verse 8. They kept laying it in heaps. And Zechariah and the leaders came and saw the heaps. They blessed the Lord and his people, Israel. Go on, verse 9. Then Hezekiah questioned the priest and the Levites concerning the heaps, verse 10, and the last. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, meaning that Hezekiah was surprised at this level of abundance. But the priest answered him and said, Since the people began to bring, note the word since, since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have plenty left for the Lord has and what is left is the greatness. You now see why there's a problem of lack in the body of the problem is not because of the availability of divine resources but the problem is in our obedience and compliance with scripture. You want abundance? These are laws. These are ways to activate. That's why the just shall live by his feet. Easy to give your first fruit. How do you survive the next month? Think about it, especially if you are a, a, a student. And I don't know if you are a student like my student because there are students and there are students. There are some students that they give you feeding money now. By next week, they are sending you another one. Then on the third week, they will send you for birthday and recharge card. You have several people you can call. Your dad is there, your mom is there, your uncle in Lagos is there, uncle in Yola is there, uncle in Taraba. So you collect from all them because you are the priest of the house. So us, our own kind of student, when you return back, there will be the, one of the advice they give you is hold God very well, oh. not because you will pass exams alone with God, but because hold that God to feed you. We don't know if money is coming at the end of the month. You understand that kind of hold God? Yeah. Tell your neighbor, hold God. Say hold God well, well, oh. 
Yawa. The Bible says, since day, I did my research and I discovered that prior to this time, if you read the verses down, this was the first time that they were giving this offering since the children of Israel came into Canaan. Can I read one more scripture and then we'll pray? Which one will I read now? Because there are several of them. Give me Ezekiel 44 verse. Okay, don't, don't, don't just go there. But listen to this. Ezekiel 44, 23, God was giving instructions to the priest. And one of the instructions was that the priest had the mandate of teaching the people to understand the difference between the holy and the unholy. Between the clean and the unclean. When the Bible speaks of the word holy, it means something that is separated and set apart. It doesn't just mean something that is without sin. It means something or someone that is set apart. Now God says the priest will teach the children of Israel to differentiate between the holy and the unholy. Meaning in their possession, they should know the part of it that is for God and the part that is for themselves. Why did the children of Israel lost or lose the battle to I? There was a town like that, isn't it? In Joshua, called Ai. Is it not? That's the name of the town, Ai. Does that name ring a bell to you? Ai means artificial intelligence. So if you look at it, we are, com we are combating. What is happening now has happened before. It's a spiritual system that is being restored now. And the Bible says the children of Israel went against this city. The city was small, but they defeated Israel. Just the way technology, science, and the world around us seems to be swallowing up the church. It's yet we claim to be the light of the world. What was the problem? Was it that God could make people? He said it in his word in Isaiah 59. That my ears are not too deaf to hear your cries. That is my hand too short to deliver you. But your sin. Is it sins or sin he put there? Sin has separated God told the children of Israel when they were to fight against Jericho in Joshua chapter 6. God told them, destroy it. Only take the gold and the silver and bring it to me. Question, why would God ask for that? What would the children of Israel have? After all, you said they should possess the land. The reason is because the children of Israel did not code. They did not decode that Jericho was the first fruit of Canaan. That was the first nation they were going against. And God said, the first of everything is what? Is mine. Be careful when you temper with what belongs to God. That's the reason why any nation that fights against Israel will go down. Ask Iran. Particular about the first. The first is him. Remember, his name is Alpha. He didn't just say, give me an offer good with your offering. God is saying, show me my place in your life. But the children of Israel, this guy called Achan, he didn't understand. When you, are, when you are void of understanding in the ways of God, you will become a casualty, even though you are a son of the kingdom. Many times. I want to show you why several people get into the year and they are cut off. People die mysteriously. Has it occurred to you? At certain strange moments, sickness ravage a whole family. Could it be that they are keeping a forbidden path? Could it be that there is a possession that belongs to God that they have taken? The Bible says, Achan, in Joshua chapter 7, took the gold and silver in it, and he hid it in his head, provoked God to anger. The last day church is powerful when we begin to understand what a covenant work is with God. That was the separated thing that I remember much of around up, Jesus revealed the, the Pharisees or the scribes when they asked him a question of tax. He asked them, Who's in the denarius? A Caesar said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God. Tonight, does 
Does it feel like some of us are withholding certain things that belongs to God? And of all the best, the first fruit is yourself. But if you withhold your heart from God, it takes no pleasure in that. He said the first thing you should do is offer first. The Bible spoke of a church called the church in Macedonia in 2 Corinthians 8. He said they gave out of their poverty into abundance. Why were they crazy givers? Paul said, I bear them witness because they first gave to me. And they first gave themselves to the Lord. So the understanding of the first fruit comes from knowing myself and everything that I am belongs to him. It is out of that understanding that God can receive anything. Now, I don't know why God asked me to teach the, the topic I, would, I want to teach. But we are going now. I discovered this, that this is the beginning of the year. Let me tell you something in five minutes. There is a place of offering as a ship to God. There is a place of offering as an instruction from God. A place of offering as a sacrifice. And when a sacrifice is involved, an altar is raised to God. Let me tell you the truth. We are living in a world where the priesthood of darkness is doing everything possible to equip themselves against the church. The Bible says we are kings. We need to tap into the priesthood dimension. There are certain offers to give. You are not just giving an offering. You are raising an altar. To counter certain altars that are raised against you. You think the devil doesn't anointed. You think the devil doesn't see what you are about to fulfill. And you don't know. You have not studied history in your family. Generations before you, there were people who rose without anointing and Satan stopped them. And now you are here and Satan knows there is a threat from you. So what, he, what will he do? He will do everything possible to cut you off. And he can do that while you are anointed. The Bible says of Saul and Jonathan, they died as though they were not anointed. There is a place whereby our offerings will raise an altar to God. There are certain kinds of bulletproof you, you gain, not because you call the blood of Jesus. You gain it because when you call the blood of Jesus, there is a sacrificial track record of you in the spirit realm that stands side by side with the ultimate sacrifice of Christ. That's why the Bible says he's seated at the right hand of God, making intercession. His intercession doesn't stop. And every time we begin to activate the place of intercession in prayers, we're standing with him. There are certain sacrifices you give people look at you as a fool you are giving too much but you are raising an altar i will not die before my time i will not be cut short on my walk to destiny there is an anointing in me that my generation needs what will happen if i die how long will it take for god to find another yielded man like me the things you should think that's why when god says give the first fruit you obey him you think it's easy for God to get your type? Do you know how many years God has been training you? For instance, let me give the character you have that God doesn't find in many people. He has been taking you through a lot of hard dealings. You claim, but you have never left. There are some people that backslid there just because they slept hungry. And in the last 10 years, you have seen high and lows, but you're faithful to God. How, long, how many more 10 years will it take God to make another person? Now, while he's making that person, that purpose is supposed to be fulfilled in a lifetime, in a generation. Meaning that if you allow certain things cut you off by reason of your disobedience to covenant injunctions to the kingdom. But tonight, this is a solemn assembly. A people of God. And the first prayer is, Lord, I give myself to you. All that I have and that I am. belongs to you. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Raise your voice and pray. For some of you, you never had this understanding before, but you have it now. The root of all that we have been talking about is that you yourself are supposed to be dedicated and consecrated unto him say lord i give you my life i give you my will i surrender to your destiny destiny is not ambition it's not something you chase after it's something you surrender to 
Some of us have been walking on an opposite tangent to the things and the place that God has called us to. That's the reason why everything you do is almost anti-God. Or it's almost as though God does not does not have respect for the things that you do like he did with Cain. It's because you must first be offered to him. You must first be offered to him. Living sacrifice Lord my All my plans Lord I pray Lift your voice and pray Lord I surrender all My life, my life Everything belongs to you I didn't have this understanding before now, Lord. But my eyes have been opened. And what best to give to you than my life? Maracosa brande brege de bosia, brego poro di agaba. Ala capra da barca baria cosia ba. Come on pray, come on pray. I give my all to you. Maracosa che te le vero lo do. Ala basia para capara do. Take my heart, take my life as a living sacrifice. All my dreams, all. Hallelujah. We are going to pray two prayers. Now I want you, don't feel guilty when we are praying this prayer. We are praying it because Listen, we are praying because we know God is always ready to show mercy. I'm teaching about first fruit today, but I sense that there are some of us here, you know honestly, honestly you know, that in your covenant with work with God, there are areas that you are found wanting. Disobedience before God is not when you don't do it alone. Disobedience is when you also delay in doing it. I hope you understand. Let me eat this one. God, I will give you the next one. The Bible says, Abel brought the first. It's painful, but give him. Because an intimate walk with God will bring you to a place where you will so surrender everything till there is no left to surrender. And at that point, you become lost in him. Search your heart as we pray this prayer. Some of you wanting in one way or the other using your givings as an example and i want you to lift your voice and say lord have you on me have mercy on me have mercy on me come on pray touch in your heart and if there are those who are completely faithful in everything then thank him for the grace Then thank him for the heart to be obedient.
Hallelujah. Listen to this. Before we pray the last prayer, let me give you my story. You know, the power of the gospel is also when there is a replication in the life of the one who tells it. Listen to me. Early this year, the first money that entered my hand by God's providence was in foreign currency. And then all of a sudden, I saw how big this money was and I saw several things I could do with it. I went to pray somewhere for somebody to dedicate a facility and then I received that. And when I was leaving, instantly I knew in my spirit that I I was supposed to give that to God. God reminded me again of the first fruit. And so two days later, I took everything and I went to my man of God like a fool. That was everything I had to a point where I had to collect money from somewhere and transport myself there. And I've discovered that in obedience, you must pay a price to obey God. He, he will never give you something that on your own you can do. Because it is in obe- obeying Him that you can show your love for Him. That's why the stronger part of marriage is in commitment, not in love. I hope you know. I'm not ruling out that love is greatest. But I'm talking in terms of the things that are needed. Please bring it down. The, great, the strongest part of marriage, and that is where you can decide between the two people, is if they are willing to make commitment. Because the proof of their love is in their willingness to be committed. I went to see my man of God, finished everything. I dropped it there. I didn't even tell him this is what I'm bringing so that he can respect for me. When I was leaving his house, calls began to enter my phone, text message. Everybody had one language. Please, sir, send me your account. Even people that I knew that had my account number. So what happened to it? You lost it. Right from his door till I got home. And when I got home, God spoke to me. He said, it's not about what they are about to give you. He said, son, from today, you will never lack one day in your life. See, the possibilities in God exist. But they are given to those who are ready to walk in obedience. I told you that this will be the year where your obedience will be demanded. Some of you, God will tell you crazy things to do. In fact, God is already telling some of you. Some of you, God can tell you for your next three months, give me your salary. (laughs) I know somebody that vowed to God when the person didn't have a job. He said, God, give me a job. I will give you my first salary. Amen. Out of desperation. Then the job came. And the money was in hundreds of thousands. Ah, it became hard for the person. Some things we do, open the door. We open the doors for the enemy to come in. Some delay is not because God is responsible. But something is lacking. This night we are going to pray for grace. If there is anything like the grace for obedience. Because sometimes when you are obeying God, you will cry. I hope you know. God, you will go back home. God will say, pack all your clothes. I'm talking to a lady because guys, don't, they don't have clothes too much. If you are a guy and you have so much clothes, please bring them. Eh? Let's do charity. But as a lady, you go back, God will just, as you open your wardrobe, God will say, everything here, give it out. That's when you begin to borrow clothes to wear. God, is this, obe- is this your voice? But your word says that we will not borrow from any. But now, because I'm obeying you, sometimes in your obedience, God wants to see where you place him and where you place the world. He wants to see where you place him. The Bible didn't say that Satan is the equal enemy to God. The Bible said it was money. He said, you shall not serve God and mammon. Not even Satan, mammon. Some of us love God, but the things of this life, the things of this life, Lift your voice and say, Lord, if there's anything like a grace for obedience, let it be released upon me this year. Not just in my giving, but in my work with you generally. The grace that allows me to be prompt in obedience when I hear your voice. The Bible says, as it is said today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Raise your voice and say, Lord, if there is any of such grace, 
Let it be poured in an abundant measure on my life. Arabako Brahaziba. Jebros Katabarada Bahazia. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made. It's all about you. It's all about you. Say, I'm going back to the heart. Come on, read your voice. and the strings say it's all about you it's all about you let's make a solemn oath and a declaration to him tonight it's all about you everything that i have that i am my all belongs to you i can never struggle in obedience to you because I'm yours and I'm yours alone. It's all, it's all about you. Jesus. One more time, declare it's all. It's all about you. Yeah. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. Listen to this. God is talking to me. I know there, there is there is a couple of persons here. I'm going to make an altar call right away. But before that, listen to this. So for some of us, this song, what it means is some of us have been going through seasons of depression, of discouragement, of despair. Satan keeps reminding you of the physical things that you have not achieved. Of certain things that you have been delayed of. And some of us are gradually losing out in our work with God because we are beginning to quantify our lives and our destinies by physical achievements, by physical accolades. That because you don't have a job by now, it means God has failed. But you need to understand that it is all about Him first. It is all about Him. Those things are good. All the good things of this life, God wants you to enjoy. He says, I hope all things that you prosper and be in health, but even as your soul. He brings you to a point where He is all that you see and all that you have. 
a point where you are dead to every other thing including disappointments and then God becomes your most priceless treasure it is at that point that God can give you anything so that even when he gives you those things they cannot take his place in your life that's why we are singing the song that it's all about him destiny purpose life it's all about him it's all about you hallelujah all eyes closed if you are here and you know you are not in good standing with jesus you are not born again you have not given your heart to the lord you are not one of his or perhaps you were born again and bright, vibrant for god but right now many things have happened and you don't know where you are you are almost losing it in your relationship with god and you need to rededicate to him if you are in any of these categories you have heard the gospel you have heard the word this evening i want you to make a decision for him while our eyes are closed and we are all standing i want you to lift your right hand and let's reconcile you to him again the bible says of the church of macedonia that they gave so much because they first gave themselves to god it's time to come back home you are here and you need to give your heart to the lord or you want to rededicate afresh you don't know where you are you are almost backsliding and you want to begin a fresh walk with god please raise your right hand and i'm going to pray for you while our eyes are all closed in this solemn moment raise your right hand raise it very high please raise it very high raise it very high god bless you i see some hands all eyes closed all eyes closed raise your right hand if you raise your right hand please walk up to the front i want to pray quick and if you are thinking to join them join them the bible says today god has only one calendar a one date on his calendar it is called today you need to say yes to jesus or you are returning back to him afresh some of you are saying lord i loved you but i missed it at some point i got involved with so many things and right now it looks like i'm miles away from you i'm returning to you those of you in front just repeat after me let's say this a minute from your heart say lord jesus i come to you today i want you to mean it from your heart say i come to you today i acknowledge my sins and my faults but i acknowledge your mercy and i ask lord that you receive me and blot out my sins therefore i declare and i decree that i'm born again and i'm a child of god in jesus name father i pray for these ones with my hands stretched towards them i ask that the first fruit of our redemption which is your spirit will come upon them i thank you because you have restored them to yourself and from today we declare and we decree that they are victorious above sin above satan and above circumstances i decree and declare that they are children of the most high that they are forward ever and never going back in jesus